Hey guys, welcome to our first online presentation. Uh, throughout this presentation, I'm just going to give you some facts and the information on Kingdom Fungi. Go ahead and take notes. Feel free to pause where you need to so you can copy all the notes down, go back if you want to see something twice, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Alright, let's get started on Kingdom Fungi. You're probably familiar with several kinds of fungi that already exist. For example, the molds that grow on bread or decaying fruit, mushroom that sprout in your front yards. Fungi vary in size from the unicellular yeast to the multi cellular fungi, such as mushrooms and the bracket fungi that look like shelves growing on tree trunks. Most fungi share three important characteristics, however. They are all eukaryotic, they use spores to reproduce, and they are heterotrophs that all feed in a similar way. We're going to talk about this more, but they use specialized structures called hyphae to absorb their food rather than eating it the way animals do. Except for unicellular yeasts, the bodies of all multicellular fungi are arranged in specialized structures called hyphae. Hyphae are the branching thread-like tubes that make up the bodies of multicellular fungi. In the picture here of the mushroom, you see the typical structure you usually expect to see when you see a mushroom. But if you actually look at a mushroom and start to pull it apart, you'll see small thread-like structures through the whole thing. Those are the hyphae. The hyphae actually extend underground like roots, and when you have uh, what we call a fairy ring in your yard where you have a ring of mushrooms, all those mushrooms are actually connected underground by a giant web of hyphae. Those are actually all the same organism you're just seeing multiple mushrooms that are there. Uh, depending on the type of fungi you're looking at, uh, the hyphae can be arranged in all kinds of different arrangements. They can be very thread-like and spread out like mold. They can be tightly packed into specific structures like the mushrooms. Okay, on the next slide here, I'm actually going to have you guys watch a video, and they're going to talk about this a little bit more in depth. Compared to the other kingdoms of living things, the basic structure of fungi is rather peculiar. The fungal body consists mainly of threads called hyphae that search out and digest food, and that can give rise to special organs used for spore production called fruiting bodies, like the microscopic example pictured here. Hyphae grow very rapidly from a single spore, and as they branch out, a tangled mass called a mycelium is formed. Mycelia can be enormous in size, larger than a thousand soccer fields, and have been observed to grow as much as a kilometer or six-tenths of a mile each day searching for food. The mushrooms we find growing in woods and lawns are actually complex spore-making structures that arise from a large underground mycelium. In fact, looking at the stalk of this mushroom, we can see that it is composed of thousands of threads of hyphae very tightly packed together. In some fungi, hyphae threads are divided up into individual cells by porous cell walls that allow mitochondria, ribosomes, and even nuclei to pass from cell to cell. But in other fungi hyphae form, cenocytic threads, that is, threads that are not divided up into individual cells and are often filled with hundreds of nuclei. All right, so what do fungi do with these hyphae structures that they have? Remember, we already said fungi are all heterotrophs, and they all feed in a similar way. Those hyphae that they have are designed to help get them food in a very specific manner. What's going to happen first is a spore which remember, if you remember from the last chapter, is a small single cell that can grow into a whole new organism. Those spores from a fungi will travel through the air. They'll go ahead and land on a food source. Once they land on that food source, they can begin growing. Next, their hyphae are going to start branching out and growing into that food source. Imagine sinking your fingers into a big cake. So they're going to grow their hyphae inside that food source. From their hyphae, they're actually going to then excrete digestive chemicals, so you can think of those chemicals as oozing out of the hyphae surface. That's going to go ahead and start to break down that food source, take those large molecules like sugar molecules and protein molecules and break them out into much smaller substances that the fungi can actually then absorb directly through that hyphae. Once they've done that process and they're absorbing that, that's how they're actually going to get the energy from what they're eating. On um, the picture that you see here, you're seeing a cross-section of a mold growing on an old orange. So again, the mold's growing on top, but it's also growing into 
the organism. Uh, this is why they're such important decomposers. As they do that, they're going to help break down, uh, remove those items, and eventually, if you give them a long enough period of time, that food item will completely disappear. Now that we've looked at how a fungi is designed and how it eats, let's talk about how they actually reproduce. How do they carry on? Fungi usually reproduce by producing lightweight spores that are surrounded by a protective covering. Uh, those spores can travel easily through air or water to new sites. Now an individual fungi is going to produce thousands and thousands of spores, many more spores than will actually grow into new fungi. Uh, of those thousands and thousands, only a few are actually going to become new fungi. They'll land in the right conditions and things like that. So most of them are going to go ahead and die, but that's why they make thousands. Fungi produce those spores in structures called fruiting bodies, which are the reproductive hyphae that grow out of a fungus. Uh, the appearance of these fruiting bodies can vary from one type of fungus to another. Uh, you're most familiar with the, with the mushroom. The actual body of the mushroom is the fruiting body. The actual body of the fungus are those hyphae that are growing underground. Uh, in bread molds, after a mold has been living on a, a piece of bread for a while, you'll see stalk-like structures that will come and grow upward from the hyphae on the surface of the bread. Uh, and it's a little bit different depending on each of the different types of fungi. And we're going to get more into that in a second when we talk about groups. Most fungi have the ability to reproduce both asexually and sexually. They're going to reproduce asexually when conditions are good. There's enough water, enough food, temperatures are right. It's a very quick, easy form of reproduction where you easily get a lot more fungi all at once. When conditions are bad, that's when they're going to go with the sexual reproduction. Uh, when you don't have good temperatures or there's suddenly not enough food, uh, the reason they go with sexual reproduction in those situations is any time you can recombine the DNA where you get the new genetic material from two different parents, it's going to ensure that the species is hopefully a little a uh, better able to adapt to new situations. So that's always going to be a benefit. So let's talk about each of those versions yourself that starts growing off of you and that new cell then basically falls off. They don't have those fruiting bodies because they're just single cells. They simply grow a new yeast cell off the side of their cell and it eventually detaches and it can live all on its own. So imagine all of a sudden being able to grow a little mini in asexual reproduction, the majority of the multicellular fungi are just going to be able to grow a fruiting body and release spores into the air or water around them. However, the unicellular yeasts have to do something a little different. They do something called budding. Basically, you have a large, healthy parent cell that's going to start growing a smaller cell off to one side. As that cell gets a little larger and is able to survive on its own, it's going to detach from the parent and suddenly you have a whole new yeast cell. Um, it's kind of a crazy way to reproduce. Imagine if you all of a sudden started growing a little baby that looked just like you out the side of your hip, and one day it had the ability to fall off and start running around. It'd be a little creepy, but kind of a cool way to reproduce. That's what the yeast cells are able to do. In sexual reproduction, it's going to work a little bit differently. You have two fungi growing relatively close together. Uh, let's say you have two different mushrooms that are near each other. The hyphae underground of those two mushrooms will actually grow together and end up touching one another. Uh, they actually then produce spores in a combined fruiting body. So the hyphae grow together, produce one fruiting body, and they make spores that then have genetic material from both parents. Um, if you guys look on the website, there's going to be an animation online that I want you to check out that will help you hopefully understand that process a little better because it's a little complicated. But again, the hyphae grow together, make one fruiting body together, and you get spores that are a combination of genetics from both parents. So it does qualify as sexual reproduction.